Today I want to just briefly talk about the feasts of the Lord as laid out in Leviticus chapter 23. Now Leviticus chapter 23 lays out seven feasts of the year. Three of those feasts take place in the first month. Then later on in the year, you have the, the day of Pentecost, what's called in the Old Testament the Feast of Weeks, and the New Testament is called Pentecost. And then you have three fall feasts that are uh, in the seventh month. Their year started in the spring, so therefore the seventh month is the, is the fall or time of harvest. Well, Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth, he fulfilled the first three feasts to a T. He fulfilled the Passover. He is our Passover. He was the Passover lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. He was the, uh, that unleavened bread of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He fulfilled the first fruits by being the first fruits of the resurrection. The day of Pentecost, obviously, in Acts 2, fulfilled the Old Testament Feast of Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks, as it's called. But the three feasts of the harvest have not yet been fulfilled. Now, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, the harvest is the end of the world. And so Jesus Christ fulfilled the spring feasts at his first coming. He's going to fulfill the autumn or harvest feasts at his second coming. Now, what are these feasts and what do they represent? Well, on the first day of the seventh month, you have the blowing of the trumpets. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you have the Day of Atonement. And on the 15th day of the seventh month, you have the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, a lot of people have erroneously concluded, well, the blowing of the trumpets, there you go. That's your rapture, pre-trib rapture. But that's not true at all. And let me explain to you a few reasons why it's not true. They say, that's the last trump of the year. And Jesus is going to come at the last trump. Blowing of the trumpets, first day of the seventh month. Well, that's not true. And here's why. First of all, if you look at the term trumpets, that's plural. Whenever the Bible talks about the rapture in the New Testament, it's always a singular, a trumpet. And not only that, but on the Day of Atonement, the tenth day of the seventh month, there's normally not a trumpet sounding on that day, at least not in Leviticus 23 or, or those type of descriptions. But every 50 years what was what was called the year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, they would sound a trumpet, singular, on the tenth day of the seventh month. And when they would sound that trumpet, they would proclaim liberty throughout all the land. Well, in Romans 8, the Bible calls the rapture or the resurrection of the dead in Christ, he calls it the glorious liberty of the children of God. And on that year of Jubilee, when that trumpet would sound, they would return to their possession, they would return to their family, they would return to their inheritance. Well, that's what we're doing on the day of the rapture. The trumpet singular is gonna sound and then we go home to be with the Lord. We are uh, returned to our possession. Our, we're going home to be with Jesus Christ for all eternity. You say, wait a minute, Pastor Anderson, what's that Feast of Trumpets about? Well, if you think about it, the first day of the seventh month is the midpoint of the year, is it not? Because you got six months before and six months after. Well, if you remember, in the midst of Daniel's 70th week, there's going to be uh, the abomination of desolation. And that's where the Antichrist begins to make war with the saints. Well, check the Old Testament. What does the blowing of trumpets represent? Warfare. They would sound the trumpets as an alarm. When they had an oppressive enemy coming, they would blow with the trumpets and the Lord would remember them and the Lord would help them. Numbers chapter 10 teaches that. So, the blowing of the trumpets is an alarm. It's an oppressive enemy, the Bible says, that's coming. And so when, that when those multiple trumpets sound on the first day of the seventh month, that is a picture of the warfare between the Antichrist and the saints, how God's going to remember us and God's going to help us. On the tenth day of the seventh month, that represents the rapture, that year of jubilee, sound of the trumpet, proclaiming of our liberty, and so forth. Now, you say, Pastor Anderson, that's just your interpretation. That's just your opinion. Okay, well, I've got proof. I've got evidence. Remember how I told you the first day of the seventh month is the midpoint of the year? Well, think about this. The tenth day of the seventh month, where does that line up with Daniel's 70th week? Well, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, verses 12 and 13, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days, and then the next thing he says to Daniel in verse 13, give me a second to turn there. He says, but go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days, the end of the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. You see, one thousand three hundred and five and thirty days into Daniel's 70th week 
is when Jesus Christ will come in the clouds and when the trumpet will sound. Well, that matches up exactly with the 10th day of the seventh month. You say, prove it. Okay, take the number 1335. Since we're talking about a seven year period, divide it by seven. Since the Hebrew calendar only spans one year, you take 1335 divided by seven, you come up with 190.71. Well, what's the 190th day of the year? the 10th day of the seventh month. Because of course there are 180 days in the first six months. So the 190th day, three quarters of the way through the day, you're gonna be on the 10th day and the seventh month. And so that right there lines up perfectly with the blowing of the trumpets lining up with the abomination of desolation, the trumpet of the Jubilee sounding on the 10th day of the seventh month representing the rapture, the trumpet sounds, glorious liberty of the children of God. Not only that, but Revelation 2.10 has a symbolic meaning as well. When the Bible says, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Those ten days are representing the first ten days of the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar, when it says, uh, you know, the, the blowing of the trumpets on the first day, and then, of course, three quarters of the way through the tenth day, you've got the trumpet of the Jubilee sounding. And so I don't believe that that's all just a coincidence. It's very clear, it lines up perfectly, and uh, the Bible's very consistent when it teaches that uh, the rapture is gonna come after the tribulation, but before God's wrath is poured out. It's gonna be part way through Daniel's 70th week, more than halfway through, 1335 days in. Now you say, oh, this kind of went over my head a little bit. Well, I encourage you to study further. Leviticus 23, and also there's a chart on our church website and also on uh, the website kjvprophecy.com that uh, shows this all laid out on a chart where maybe you can get a better visual representation of it. But the feasts of the Lord are, fulfill are fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. The springtime feasts were fulfilled with His first coming. The harvest feasts are going to be fulfilled at His second coming.